realized yesterday when uh, Rhea and I came on the bus and we talked a little bit about the phospho, the OSFO on the floor and uh, the crunchiness and everything underneath it. Um, and on the last video, I told you I laid the OSFO down, but I didn't tell you how. Um, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you a little bit. I've got some concerns here that I want to take care of so I can take care of the concerns and I can show you at the same time as what I'm talking about here with the OSPO on the floor. Um, so give me a second. I'll turn this uh, camera around so you can see what I'm dealing with on the floor and uh, I'll show you what I did. Okay, so as we talked about, you can see here, let's take a look at this in the light. You can see where the areas had turned black that's the chemical change. The areas that are white, that is the chemical salts that are coming up. Look at that. That is... Now some of this is still wet. It's been really cold. I sprayed this down about a week ago, like I said, and it just hasn't dried. Um, but here's some areas that concern me right now. See that orange coming up through the white? I'm afraid that that might be rust that didn't quite get converted. Maybe I rushed it a little bit. Maybe I didn't quite get everything that I wanted to get. I don't know. I'm not saying anything negative because I'm not exactly sure what this is supposed to look like. So, but I'm gonna try to clean that up a little bit. And then how I put the phospho, or the OSPO, I keep calling it phospho. When I put the OSPO down, I just used a sprayer, like a bug sprayer or whatever. Um, I just used a regular sprayer. For the areas that were thicker, I, uh, I also got in there with a paintbrush, and I tried to bristle the, 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 the OSPO deep into the, the pits in the rust but essentially let me clean up some of this uh, some of the mess here and then I'll spray some more down just to give you a rough idea it's just it's not a heavy coat it's just a layer on top just enough to saturate into the metal into the rust and allow it to convert alright so I cleaned up these areas the best I could um, for right now, cleaned out some of the salts. There's still some orange coming through throughout here. Um, so basically, just take my sprayer, put some air pressure in here. And that's pretty much it. Now, let me try to get this thing disconnected here. I don't know if, uh, if I'm laying it on too thick or, or what. I'm hoping that that's right. Um, the directions just say get up all your loose rust. Um, and heavy flakes, Oop, didn't mean the glare, sorry about that. Get up all the heavy rust, loose flakes and everything like this and then lay, uh, put your, your OSPO down. And uh, it just doesn't say how thick, it doesn't say how much, it doesn't say to brush it in. It just says you can use a brush, you can use a roller, you can use a sprayer. Um, and from what I've seen on other YouTube channels from uh, 
body workers and stuff like that, people that, that are working on uh, doing body work on cars and so forth, say the spray method is the best. Um, so that's what I've done, and that's what we got. So let's turn this back around. You can now see where I've sprayed. And all these areas here. And hopefully I did it right. So next project that I'm going to be working on right now, this is what I'm going to be doing today, is I want to see what's behind these wall panels. Um, if it's the fiberglass insulation, I'm going to peel the panels down, I'm going to rip the, the insulation out, um, which means that also the ceiling is probably the same stuff and that's going to have to come out. Now, here, take a look at this. Now, fortunately, these are all screws and not rivets. So, I don't have to drill each one of these things out. I just need to unscrew them. So I got my work cut out for me. reason why I'm pulling these walls off it's just to make sure that the fiberglass underneath well I want them to replace the stuff I want to replace the insulation the fiberglass underneath is very poor insulation and a lot of times when water gets in there it gets all moldy and moldy and I don't want mold growing in my walls so that's why I'm pulling all this apart but if if there's no water in the walls, if, if this not moldy, all this was a waste of time. I could just throw another, slap another thing of, of foam, a dense foam insulation right on top uh, of these walls. And on top of here to go up to the lip that's right there. And that would be a sufficient amount of insulation on the walls um, of this bus. It's a lot of friggin' work, just unscrewing all these screws. Now, in order to get these panels off, I gotta pull the windows out. And I don't wanna pull the windows out right now. Um, I'm not ready for that yet. I still gotta take care of this floor. I wanna wash the floor and, uh, and then seal the floor so that it can handle getting wet. If I pull all the windows out right now, the floor is not ready. I'm going to end up rusting again, um, where I don't want that to. I don't want to be rusting like that. So, a um, little bit at a time. I got the screws out of the passenger side of the wall. I still got to grind the screws out with, or behind me. Um, and then I've got the entire other side to do. But like I said, um, I'm not ready to pull these panels off yet because I'm not ready to pull the windows out yet. So, in the meanwhile, let me just keep at what I'm doing, I'm trying to come up with a new game plan in my head. Um, who knows, maybe I'll pull the windows out, pull the wall things off, put the windows back in. Well, after carefully inspecting the fiberglass behind the walls, um, it's clean. It's really nice, clean fiberglass. So I don't think I'm going to pull these walls off. I'm going to clean them 
and screw them back in, but that just means all the hours of work that I've just done today is uh, was a waste of time. Um, I've been here since about 9.30 this morning. It is now 1 o'clock in the afternoon, and uh, all that time was just taking out screws and grinding off screws for getting access to behind the walls. But much to my surprise, to my excitement, I guess, too, because that also means a lot of, uh, I'm going to save a lot of time, um, with at least with not having to do the other side. And I also don't have to take the windows out um, to finish doing what I'm doing. So windows are staying in, ceiling is going to stay in. Um, I did pull some of this off on the other side um, to see what kind of access I had behind there for, uh, for running electric. Um, there's quite a bit of space. Actually, let me take you guys over there so you can see it, but there's quite a bit of space back here for me to run whatever electrical I need. There, take a look at that. This is all that's running in there right now. This is all the space I've got. Now, that space that, or those wires back there run the, uh, the lights for the bus, the interior lights for the bus, uh, also the speaker lines. So um, I could essentially have surround sound speakers or surround sound in here uh, if I wanted to um, figure out how to hook up a radio. I don't listen to the radio while I'm driving for the most part, but I guess it would be nice to have that or hook it up to the entertainment center so that when we're watching TV, we can have surround sound. Um, but, so I gotta put all these screws back in. I'm not gonna put them all back in. I don't see the, the need to put 1,000 screws in, or 500 or whatever I took out. Um, I may put three or four screws into each panel, um, and then every, third one down at the bottom or something like that just to put them back in um, but like I said the fiberglass behind there is in pristine condition that lip that's on the uh, the base where the where the seats screwed in um, that's going to be my distance from the wall that I'm going to put a, a, a dense uh, foam insulation in there when I frame out my my walls and stuff. So, um, again, just going to leave it. I'm saving myself a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of energy. Uh, and I'm still going to have decent insulation in the walls. Um, biggest problem with the insulation anyway is not the walls or the ceiling, it's these windows. These windows are going to lose a lot of heat or a lot, let in a lot of heat um, during the summertime, lose a lot of heat during the wintertime. Um, so I got to get the right tinting and the right insulation, you know, the right, right tinting stuff that'll, that'll keep it, uh, cooler in the summertime and hopefully hold, retain the heat inside the bus in the wintertime. Um, so now it's just a matter of me wiping everything down and trying to figure out how I'm going to frame this out. Um for the build out. So I still need to, uh, to pressure wash, power wash the floors, um, and then lay my acrylic uh, 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 coating down on the floor um, to seal everything shut, seal everything, and keep it, make it waterproof, uh, and prevent it from rusting anymore or rusting ever again. And, uh, yeah, so that's where, where we are right now. Um, I guess after I power wash the floors, I got to also seal up all those little holes too. So, um, and that's not, not that big of a, of a problem. So that's it for now with the, with the walls. Um, next video will probably be about 
power washing, pressure washing the floor, um, cleaning all this stuff up, getting rid of a lot of this uh, rust dust in here, um, and then prepping it for putting the sealant on the floor. And that's it. I gotta go get Rhea from the bus stop. I will talk with you guys soon. Ciao for now.